Okay, number 12 here is again asking us to find determine, uh, intervals of concavity and also to find any points of inflection. So let's get rolling here. Y prime, our first derivative, is going to be a 7 fifths and then x to the 2 fifths as we drop the power by 1. That wasn't that bad, but I think it's about to get ugly right here. Y double prime, all right, power rule again, 7 fifths times the 2 fifths is going to get us, well, that's not fun, 14 20 fifths, no thank you, and then x x2, drop the power by 1, negative 3 fifths. So I suppose, if you were so inclined, you could rewrite that as a 14 over 25. Ugh. And I'm just going to leave that as x to the 3 fifths power. If you wanted to, guys, you could rewrite that with a radical, and that would be the fifth root of x cubed. All right, that might be another way to write it too, but I don't think that's going to be a whole lot of fun for us right there. Okay, so there's our second derivative, and uh, this is an interesting one. If in your mind you're only thinking that a point of inflection can occur when the second derivative is equal to zero, you're going to be a little disappointed in this problem here, guys, because what we have for our second derivative is a quotient function, but the numerator is constant. There's no value of x that would make this quotient equal zero. You simply we cannot take 14 divided by any number and get zero for your result. But much like with critical points, you also have to stop and think about what would make this particular value right here uh, I spelled it wrong too, undefined. And that would happen just if your denominator were equal to zero. So I'm actually going to go back to this form of it right here. If 25 x to the 3 fifths were equal to zero, then our second derivative would be undefined, and that's a potential point of inflection there as well. Well, guys, I don't think we need to spend a great deal of time thinking about this one. The only value that would make this thing equal zero would be if x were equal to zero. You're welcome to divide both sides by 25 if you wanted to do that, and then you would take the result then to the 5 thirds power after that, but guess what? It's zero to any power. Yeah, you're going to end up with x equals zero. So this is going to be a pretty quick and easy sign chart right here just with two intervals, and I'm going to pick two test values and plug them into this expression right over here. So I want to pick x values that you can take uh, to the 3 fifths power. What that really means is they need to be perfect fifths. Well, there's nothing in the world wrong with choosing negative 1 and positive 1, which is probably what you would have chosen anyway, even if you weren't thinking about this one. So here we go, guys. If we were to take y double prime of negative 1, let's put it into this box right here. Negative 1, we would want the fifth root of that, which is negative 1. Cubed, which is negative 1, times 25, which is negative, and 14 over a negative is negative. So that means we're concave down on that interval. But now, I think we can see this pretty quickly, if you put in a positive one right here, everything in the denominator stays positive, the numerator stays positive, so y double prime of positive 1 would be positive, and we would be concave up. So... Answering the question right here, guys, we are concave downward, there we go, on an interval that really has no beginning value, negative infinity, and stops at zero. We are concave upward on an interval that starts at zero and goes to infinity, that'll work, and we have one and only point of inflection right here, guys, where the sign of our second derivative changed. So we have a point of inflection at x equals zero, and that is going to be our answer here to number 12.